Hi there. <laughs> this is a song I wrote for anyone wondering what the heck permaculture is. I hope you enjoy. A permaculture design just finished up my course. Wanna take it home, take the world on a tour to force of fruits and trees, flowers and bees, sprouts and seeds, enough for you and me. First come the earth, yeah, you got to take care of it. Then come the people, then each his fair share of it. Design for the earth and you design for yourself. Help design a world better for you and everybody else. Yeah, principle one, observe and interact. Or you won't get far, man, that is just a fact. Principle two, capture and store energy. Put the water in the ground instead of washing out the sea. Principle three, e -e is often so so tasty it's obtain a yield no matter what you grow it got to eat to work to live to make it worth all the hoeing principle four i keep you on track self-regulate and accept feedback by that i mean you got to know that things change don't be afraid to learn from nature's ways mm. First come the earth, yeah, you got to take care of it. And then come the people, and each his fair share of it. Design for the earth, and you design for yourself. Help design a world better for you and everybody else. Principle five, it's better to be renewable. Hydroelectric, solar power, it's super doable. You don't need a tractor if you got a horse. If you got two hands, you don't need brute force. Principle six, waste is an illusion. Nature recycles all while we waste time in confusion. Principle seven, design for power. North of Gainesville, a little bit in Bradford County, actually on the Santa Fe River, I have um, Gaia Grove, Eco Camp, and uh, Eco Village in the making. Um, it's 92 acres on the river. Um, I want to own it collectively with other people. We have some operated homes there that use cistern compost toilets. We want to have a little village of, of off grid homes. And we, and we have portable eco homes to that. Are for sale. They're really cool looking. We also have um, the Hare Krishna Temple nearby. He's representing that. Uh, there's 120 acres there. They're, do they're doing a small 12 acre eco village too. Um, and um, nearby, also in Bradford County, is Michael Stevens, Finca Michael. They're doing an earth skills gathering at the end of the month from um, January 31st to February 2nd. That, that'll be real cool. Um, it's the third year, and there's also a lot of CSAs in the area, and then I'm going to turn it over to Wendy. She's going to tell you more about Gainesville. There's a lot of energy going on in Gainesville right now. It's super, super exciting. We have um, many businesses and nonprofit organizations. we got the Edible Plant Project, which has been going on, and they grow locally. Um, easy to grow plants, um, edible plants, to distribute them to the community for a very, very low, low cost um, for volunteer. Um, we have a co-op, Citizens Co-op, which just came up last year, and we also have Gainesville Compost, who is um, represented by this wonderful woman. I'm Rain, and y'all know me online as The Knob. The Knob. Zinab. 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 Yeah. Zinab, Zinab and her crew, they, um, they bike around Gainesville. It's wonderful. They bike around Gainesville and pick up food scraps from restaurants and turn them into compost. There's in more than one location, so that it's, it's not all in one space, and people can go get the compost when they want. And they also sell at the farmer's market on Wednesday and are doing vermiculture now. And these are, I have some concentrated worm castings. If anybody has a jar, I'm happy to give you some to take home. It's going to die in a week, all the happy microorganisms, so take it now, put it somewhere fun. And there's some instructions here, and also there's some PPP flyers. See you afterwards. Yeah, so, see me after. See you afterwards, that's right. Um, there are also some local businesses, like Abundant Edible Landscapes, and they go around and they do permaculture applications for the home, um, as well as Florida Foodscapes, and they do also permaculture applications for the home. Um,
Um, we also have businesses like where's Joe? Joe Pierce's place, Mosswood Farm, and um, they basically um, have locally available goods for sale there, as well as a wonderful, wonderful demo. Um, Crone's Cradle Conserve. And we also have a nonprofit called Florida Organic Growers that is local, and they represent all of Florida, but they are very Gainesville specific. And they have a program called Gift Gardens, in which they give gardens to low-income folks as well as schools, and the plants and all the resources. Um, so we also have a bunch of community going on right now, a lot of energy behind that. And as Joanna had mentioned, Finca Michael, that could be considered a community. Um, we have Shambhala, which used to be more of a community, but now is not. It's it's a wonderful demo of um, of using some of the Um and Then we have Joanna's place, Gaia Grove, and Starlight Collective, which is um, Erica Miller's place, and they're doing lots of wonderful things over there. Erica's got um, a earth bag home, which has been cobbed and, and is being lived in. It's really, really beautiful space. Um, as well as um, they just built a mass rocket heater. I think I said that right. A rocket mass heater for their space. They have um, a large community kitchen and community space upstairs where kids um, can play and meet and have a great time. Did I represent that well? Okay. okay good. Um, on top of that, we have a place called Mary Springs, which is a new healing center in which they're. Um, doing some permaculture type stuff, although they haven't been formally trained in permaculture. It's, it's definitely going on there. Um, and then we have permablitz style um, events going on. There's um, a new garden that just recently got, I believe it was a grant uh, from the city. The Are Porter we talking garden? about Porter? Yeah. Actually, um, can I talk yeah. about Yeah, okay, so talk about Porter's garden. So Porter's is a, is a neighborhood in downtown Gainesville, and it's a small, poor neighborhood, um, pretty tight community. There was a there's a space that was donated by a local resident, and it became a garden um, with the intention of having perma blitzes. It has a food forest that was started a few years ago, and it was off and on with um, who was running it for a while. And then the guy that was taking care of it was going to leave. Um, some of y'all might know him. His name's Brian. Um, and he's off doing permy stuff, but now the community, a lot of Occupy people, etc., got together and were like, hey, we can't let this die. And so over the summer, we cleared the space up, and now um, Florida Organic Growers got on board as well, and they ran an Indiegogo campaign and raised $16,000 within the community within like a couple months. And now we have more donations of food, um, tr fruit trees and stuff um, that we're incubating. We're building a greenhouse right now, and there's um, gift gardens for the actual community members, and then also the central area of the property. This is not a large area. It's like a normal house plot area. But the central area um, has uh, rose growing right now with some trellises, and all of that food is going to be donated to um, the St. Francis House, which feeds homeless people and also has a, a food kitchen. Um, and we are always down to have more volunteers. All right, real quick, I'm going to finish up. Am I, my time's up? Yeah? Okay, my time's way up. Okay. We have, we have wonderful CSAs. We have wonderful farmer's markets in Gainesville. Um, lots of energy behind those, as well as a new program called Field, Trip to, Field Trips to Farms, in which people are trying to get together and gather and go visit farms and do, um, and do tours of them. I think that's it. Thanks. permaculture into that. Um, I'm currently working on a project for three years now. This will be the last year that I'm on it officially with school where um, I got involved with permaculture a few years ago and I'm interested a lot in the construction aspect of it and we are luckily have engineers without borders on campus and we're testing earth bag structures to make them legitimate under insurance companies regulations etc. Um, we have more testing going on this semester and so if anyone wants to talk about that, like I'm all about making sure that people can do this on a legal front so that more people are interested in doing it, raising property values, etc. So if anyone wants to talk to me about earth back construction, natural construction, hit me up later. What's your name? I'm Rain. Like the weather. Okay. <laughs> weather not today. Uh, <laughs> all right, Paul and Rebecca from Tallahassee. Lots going on in our area, yes. which is the Tallahassee Big Bend area Red, Red uh, Hills Red Hills by our region um, Leon County Wakulla Gadsden um, yeah. okay so um, 
Wendy participated in this. There was the first, uh, we think it was the first ever county extension PDC offered last year in Leon County. Uh, it's being offered again this year. It's a year-long course. It will be offered on every uh, second Saturday or every other Saturday for a year, or I guess it's less than a year. Six months. Uh, six months, thank you. And um, I was a student and Paul was sort of an adjunct professor for that. <laughs> and, uh, um, that was a lot of fun, and a lot of the people that were in that class uh, unfortunately aren't here, but they're here in spirit. And Wendy was a great, has been a great teacher for yes. that class. Thank you, Wendy. <laughs> There's a permaculture learning center in Bluntstown, west of Tallahassee, about an hour, called Wildcat. I can't tell you a lot about it, but they're doing some great things there. I haven't visited there yet. Uh, okay. Um, we co-own a small enter social enterprise called Edible Landscapes, and we believe it's the first permaculture enterprise in the area. And we have been doing um, some small yard uh, permaculture design work, but we're mainly interested in doing uh, work with low-income communities and teaching them about permaculture. One of our projects uh, was an edible uh, permaculture edible uh, tree planting in a, uh, a public park in a, in this, uh, in a low income neighborhood in Tallahassee. It was on Earth Day of this year and I think about 70 food producing uh, trees and bushes were planted in the park. This was in collaboration with the county park, de uh, the city park department. We're also involved in uh, developing the first uh, com community garden in Frenchtown, which is also a low-income uh, neighborhood in Tallahassee. <coughs> it's also considered a food desert, if, if any of you are aware of that terminology. There's not good grocery stores within uh, walking or driving distance for a lot of folks that live there. Um, and there's a lot of city and city and also county support for community gardens in Tallahassee and Leon County and there's financial support as well as they'll, the city will put in your water system for you for free. Um, so, I think we got to flip it. Oh, okay. um, there's a, a vibrant transition movement in Tallahassee. It's been going for I think about a year and a half, maybe two years now. Lots of educational events and they're starting to get more involved in hands-on projects as well. They're doing a lot of reskilling. I taught a canning pre food preservation class and they've been doing a lot of solar oven and solar charging workshops. Um, we're also, we've been really passionate about, we want to show, have a demonstration food forest in Tallahassee. We've been really pushing for this for a long time. Uh, Paul just completed a grant application that hopefully will get funding to support us to do the work and also plant the food forest in Frenchtown. And it would be an educational site where people could come and tour, see the plants that grow in our region. And, uh, and teach each other. And then we're hoping to have the youth actually propagate the plants and then distribute them throughout the community. Uh, there's a vibrant local food movement in Tallahassee. The hub of it is called the Tallahassee Food Network. It's been going for about, I think about a couple years and it meets once a month uh, at the site of an urban farm in Frenchtown uh, where youth grow vegetables for the community. And we just went to a meeting uh, yes, uh, Thursday, and there were 45 people in attendance. It's really awesome. Um, well, I don't know that I'll, I'll speak to this one. Okay, so recently, uh, a friend of ours who was also in the Leon County Permaculture course started a meetup group called the North Florida Permaculture Learning Cooperative. And we're hoping to just have a place, an internet site, where everyone can post events and talk about what they're doing and post pictures and that sort of thing. And what, one of our passions is uh, living in a village. We both want to live in a village, so we're passionate about Echo Villages, and we've been holding an intention to create one in our area, and we've begun talking with people uh, quite seriously. So um, we're just continuing to hold that intention. That's it. Thank you. Guys, so it's wonderful to be here. Um, we've got a lot of things going on, and there's a much larger group but uh, there's a very sm a small number of us have turned out for some reason, but you know, hey, that's all good. So uh, we have about 300 members. Uh, three years ago, Val and Eli um, put together a project at a house that they owned in an older neighborhood. It's just a little postage stamp, and they have turned it into a food forest. 
and they have had constant attacks from neighbors. Mm -hmm. And luckily, thanks to Charlie Crist, we have the Florida Friendly Landscaping uh, Clause that's out there that says if they know why they've planted the plants and there is a benefit to the plants, then no one's going to chop them down. So when they got their notice, they submitted that uh, sheet of paper and it came back. You're fine. Ah. And now they have over 300 varieties of plants, uh, trees, 500 to 1,000 varieties of plants. It is literally a three-year-old food forest. The uh, moringa is 30 feet tall. The, 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 the uh, china berry trees are 30 feet tall. They've got uh, just plants growing everywhere, including the weeds. And it's an absolutely beautiful um, environment. Right around the corner, we worked on a place called Coquina Gates. If you guys are familiar with sacred lands, Coquina Gates is on that level of coolness. The houses are made by a, by a set designer. Um, big castle, you know, doors and all this beautiful stuff, but they've turned it into an arts community. And now we have events there where we have big art turnouts and we also put in gardens everywhere. So there are an awful lot of plants with, you know, flowers, food, fruit, herbs, you know, the weeds, everything going on there. It's a wonderful uh, place, a great place for little kids to hang out. We do our workshops there sometimes. Uh, yeah. um, so uh, let me uh, get on my list here so I don't forget everything. We've got wood stork. Wood stork's Wood stork. Yes. The oh. real one. <laughs> Very rare. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, the, uh, that community is about 50 years old now, which is really wonderful. As a matter of fact, the, the wife of the lady, or the man who built it, had died in, in one of the houses under care. So she's actually, uh, you know, lived her whole life basically there. It's a beautiful thing. Uh, we do talks around Jacksonville at the Extensions Office, the UF Extensions Office. And when we went there a couple years ago, they were talking about what pesticides and what this and what that and what herbicides and, and what, what are weeds and you need to pull them down. And after we've done our talks with those people over and over again, I'm happy to say that the last time we went there, they didn't talk about pesticides. They didn't talk about herbicides. There was a table with some junk on it, but I kind of like, you know, just didn't even look over there. And when it was all said and done, I literally said, I really almost don't have to talk today. So I got up and just talked about all the wonderful projects going on around the world in permaculture, you know, the Willie Smiths of the world and the Sepp Holders and all the just fantastic things that are happening, uh, Tony Renato. Um, so we go to the Sierra Club and talk to a bunch of people there. That was a wonderful thing. We picked up a lot of very active members. Um, yoga studios and we go to the prepper meetings and we go to meetings of people that, you know, technically automobile people and we talk about stuff like, you know, what we're talking about, crazy stuff. Don't water your plants, you know, don't fertilize, just grow it, grow it like nature grows it. It's a wonderful thing. People turn on to us. We have an activist group that likes to be very politically active and that's great for them and we, we, we hand them things that they need to focus on and they go and, and charge up the hill and make it happen. Uh, we have a bicycle group because in, in our little townships we actually can walk or ride our bicycles to everything and we're not doing it, so, you know, some of us aren't. We have a cargo bike, my, Maya rides on, on the back of me and all that. And we're trying to set that example, and more and more of this is happening, which is a wonderful thing. Uh, we have a guy um, in Jacksonville, Tim Armstrong, Eat Your Yard Jacks, and he runs around and he, you know, for money, plants an entire permaculture system in your yard that will actually feed you, and it actually passes HOAs, which is absolutely wonderful because it is ornamental food. It's beautiful. Um, the, uh, we had a... Uh, a lady named uh, Karen. She um, four years ago started doing old style gardening and some, you know, some square foot gardening, and then found permaculture and then found us. And now we've just been blasting her yard. You can't see her house from the street. You can't see my house from the street. You can't see Val and Eli's house from the street. And it's beautiful and it's commented on. And when you're sitting there and people walk by and they point and they, they're smiling and they're loving it, you know you're doing your job and it's a wonderful thing. Uh, we also uh, do CERT training, uh, it's, uh, you know, for emergency uh, preparedness, we do ham radio. Um, we, uh, let's see, um, Kilkenny Gates, okay, got a project going. So we've got the three-year-old food forest project, we've got mine that's two years old at my house. And at my house we also have been doing insulation projects. It's a raised house, it's a 1920s bungalow, so I've, I've got the advantage of being raised. We're cooling the house and we're using heat to dry the air before it goes in. Not done yet. I'll, I'll keep you informed. Hopefully by this time next year I'll have some positive results. Uh, we have actually managed to not use the air conditioner well into, the, into June with a very picky wife, which is a beautiful thing. And so we don't have to turn the heater on at all during the winter, which is wonderful. Um, so I have a project going on. that we It's a food forest that's just gone on in a pine desert. And you know about deserts and pines. I mean, you reach down, there's no soil, nothing gets a hold unless it's grass. 
And that's been going on for eight weeks. And in eight weeks, I've managed to make the woman that lives there cry. It's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. I think it's wonderful when I can make the ladies cry. <laughs> so <laughs> so she, she swings on her swing. And, yeah, and I do it un unintentionally sometimes. Uh, she is a horse rescue. She actually brings in people who are sick, and she nurtures them all back to life. They all get a green drink every day. They all eat 100% organic food. And now we're trying to grow that food. Also, we run together a Thursday's organic co-op bringing food in. And we're, I'm bound and determined by this time next year to have at least 50% of that food being grown on that property and have that take over. Because, you know, this organic food comes from Chile and other places. It's a wonderful thing, but I don't want to ship it. Um, we've been doing a lot of reskilling workshops. It's been a wonderful project to actually go out and teach people about natural building, <coughs> um, how to plant, uh, the concepts of Google culture, concepts of sheet layering, all these things, the canning, the weaving we do. Uh, uh, one of my favorites is what to grow in your garden so that you don't have to go to the store and buy household items. You know, the bamboo and the loofah and, and all the different little items you can have in your house. Um, Ed, right here, is that my one minute or I'm over? Uh, over. One minute. Oh, no, over. Here. okay, well, I got to tell you about Ed's project and I'm done. There's a lot more here. Ed has a Unitarian Food Forest uh, program going down south of us, um, Unity Church, I'm sorry. And uh, he has turned a standard community garden with plank boards into a permaculture setting. And single-handedly, he's a, almost going to plant his own food forest in that spot, just bringing people in and teaching them how to really make things grow without inputs. It's a beautiful thing. Thank you for being here, everybody.